friendship and being in places that are intentional with intentional conversation, I, I would say I could not over rate that enough for also your mental health. We really do need, you know, people to connect with and to be real with and to be safe with. Welcome back to Beauty Marks Podcast, a space where we embrace our marks acquired through our journey. My name is Elisa Savion, and thank you for joining me on another episode of this podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to leave a review or subscribe, and that helps to grow the podcast and just get more people to join the Beauty Marks Podcast community. On today's episode, I have a very special guest, Dana, and she is the founder of The Dining Project and Women Lead, and is really about cultivating community within Orlando and a lot of she has a lot of great aspirations and things that she's working on and i'm just really excited for today's conversation so welcome to beauty marks podcast thanks thanks for having me here yeah yes yes glad to be back yes, i love like having these candid conversations and just getting to know more about like your story what makes you so passionate about what you do so can you share with those that don't know you a little bit um, about what brings you joy and what sparks that joy in general is focusing on things that I love to do um, so being with my family being with friends spending time in the ocean reading being with my dog uh, I love cooking and I love cocktails so that's something that definitely brings me a lot of joy what are your favorite go-to food and cocktails? Oh my gosh! Because I know you, um, you're, a, a, you're, you love them. I do love them. <laughs> yes. Um, something that I make is I really love toast. That's kind of like a little bit fried on the um, stovetop with some mm -hmm. olive oil, and then some ricotta that is whipped up with like lemon juice lemon zest and salt and pepper and then really good juicy in season like heirloom tomatoes thick cut and then a little bit of chopped up uh, basil on top drizzled with olive oil some Malden salt and fresh cracked pepper I think you would love it I love it yes. yeah it's one of my favorite things to eat and, and yes one of my favorite things to drink which would actually pair really nicely with that is a Negroni or a Boulevardier mm -hmm. So Negroni is gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth. Boulevardier is bourbon, Campari, and sweet vermouth. So they're very similar. So either one of those really rich and um, just smooth, delicious, flavorful drink. That sounds like you know all the combinations that go together too. Like having a good meal but also with a good drink. Sure. I love both of those yeah. <laughs> yeah, And together. so I know that you do that for bringing people together over mm -hmm. food and drinks. Yes. And so can you share like how what got you started in what you do today yeah. and how did that all come about? So the Dinner Party Project has been for almost nine years now. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so it started in August of 2014 um, and we're at about 800 dinner parties. Um, anywhere from like two to 200 people mm -hmm. in an evening. And um, it started definitely in a place where I was in a frustrated, you know, spot in my life. And um, I was working really hard. I've worked in events, you know, for now for 18 years, but I was just working just to a point of kind of being burnt out. And so I took a sabbatical and I took a break and I um, just went to Australia, New Zealand and blew all of my savings <laughs> like a real responsible adult. Um, and I just took this time off to just go and travel, which is something that fills me up for sure. And seeing the world and meeting new people. And um, it wasn't all perfect, of course. You know, wherever you go, there you are. So dealing with whatever's going on within you. But I came back from this time, which I really loved, and came back to Orlando and was – not sure where I want. I didn't want to kind of return to some of the things that I had already been, you know, participating in. I had a part-time job and I um, was just at a funky, frustrated place in my life. And so uh, around that time, a friend of mine asked me, what brings you joy and what brings you life and what are you not doing that you should be doing? And so I thought about that and I thought, I guess if I could do whatever I wanted to do, I would, you know, be at dinner parties. Mm -hmm. I love being at dinner parties. Yeah. Like I just mentioned, I love eating and I love drinking. Um, I think those are my kind of top skills in life. Um, I'm not talented at much else, but um, <laughs> yeah. You know all the good, you know all the good, you know all the good drinks. 
I know and some of them. Absolutely. Kind of I, yes. Yeah. So I just kind of had this idea of like a separate club where it'd be like eight, eight kind of like random people around the dinner table. There would be a host. There would be four courses. There'd be four beverages. There would be just a place to um, invite people like into my home. And so I had a dinner table that sat eight people. So I just invited seven strangers plus myself around a dinner table. And I was like, I don't know if anybody's going to show up. You know, this <laughs> yeah. might be nothing. But um, yeah, so I started that in 2014 and kind of it's kind of grown since that initial kind of concept into lots of different things. But that was the early days. Yeah. And it, it has grown to amazing things. And like even the people that you've met throughout. So were you someone that like was very outgoing to like meet new people? Was that very easy for you? Because a lot of people might say like being around different strangers around the table sounds very awkward. Sure. <laughs> so like, totally. you know, so how was that for you? Was that naturally something that you just really enjoyed having conversations with strangers? I think naturally I love hosting. Yeah. So I love hosting. I think I'm very passionate about community. Mm -hmm. And so I've always kind of created – I've wanted to create things that bring people together because I know that we're not like built for isolation yeah. like in that way. And so um, I had lived out in California for less than a year out in L.A., and I just remember like I was like, I just can't find my people. Like I couldn't figure out how to – in this big city um, that's very spread out, uh, I just couldn't figure out how to meet new people that I wanted. Like I wasn't going to go and hang out at a bar, you know, all the time. You know, that was part of it is like I would want to make a welcoming space mm -hmm. for people to come and meet new people that they would they might be interested in. And so whether you're outgoing or not, you have a, there's a host there and the host is really there to welcome you and to make you hopefully feel welcomed, to hand you a cocktail when you come in and, and we want – people to feel whether they're naturally, you know, that's easier for them to be more outgoing or maybe they're a little bit more reserved. We we want to be able to set the table to um, have everybody engaged around the dinner table, not not just, you know, the quiet people kind of sit there and the more talkative people <laughs> yeah. kind of dominate the, the conversation for the whole night. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes that's the personality types or just the way that you um, maybe don't have the social cues or do, you know, like mm -hmm. that's stuff that you can learn to navigate conversation. But sometimes if you're going into these situations, you're like, okay, do I need to be more or do I need to be less? You sure. know, like to being self aware. Mm -hmm. um, so for the dinner party project, how has that evolved and grown into what it is today? Because that started like, eight people, mm -hmm. you know, together. Yeah. And so where did you see that a, like, there was a need for that? And then how has it become what it is? So it's, yeah, it started out for dinner for eight and that kind of took off at the beginning and it wasn't really a business idea and I don't love running a business and, um, <laughs> there's so many of yes, <laughs> there's, there is a, a, a plethora of things that are, are so important to running a business well on top of just the creative idea, which is the thing that I only wanted to do. Um, so from Dinner for Eight, yeah, we really started seeing people showing up and, um, you know, strangers were gathering around the table, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, we kind of um, started going into like uh, private parties. So mm -hmm. people had, you know, someone was like, oh, I'm having a birthday. Can you do a birthday? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we can do that. Um, anniversary dinners. Um you know, we've done a couple of micro weddings during the pandemic we did and um, anything that people need us to do like a custom dinner for, we started like getting people that were needing that. So we were responding and then putting it out there more as far as like a personal, it's not dinner, it's not eight strangers now. It's like, hey, like I want to gather my team. Mm -hmm. I want to do a team building dinner. I want to gather and then we take care of like everything from start to finish, you know, in that way. Um, so it's grown in that way from private stuff. We're trying to get more corporate into the corporate world and gathering their teams, gathering their, um, you know, for their holiday party or for a quarterly meeting, um, any type of reception. Maybe they're inviting a new doctor onto their team and they want to invite them in with a dinner party so they can meet the other people that they're going to be working with in that way. Um, we started something called Women Lead Orlando. I started it with a friend, Laura Youngkin, um, 
in I think 2017 mm-hmm. or 16 maybe. So I had done a, like a ladies. I, I there's so many incredible women within Orlando, and so I wanted a night for these amazing leaders. You know, some of them own their own businesses, some of them are just leaders within their their companies or schools or whatever. So I had done something on a smaller scale with women connection. And then from there, I wanted a bigger reach of like, there's so many women. I want them to feel like there's other, knowing that other women are what they're doing in the city, how to be more connected. If you're leading, sometimes it's very challenging, you know, so making connections within um, our city just to make you feel a little bit less alone in that way. And so we started with 100 women the first year, and then um, we just had our fifth year, um, which you came to. It was, it was beautiful. I have to say everything about it and just the feeling of exactly what you're just saying about making people feel like, wow, there's so many amazing women doing mm-hmm. great things that I didn't know. Right. And now I do right. like around me. Yes. Yes. The hope is to be encouraged by yes. seeing what other people are doing, sharing what you're doing, just the more connections that you have, the better. Um, like I said, we're not built for isolation. So it's like a really – so Women Lead Orlando has been an event that we've put on kind of like on a larger scale. Yeah. Um, and then we're trying to grow that. You know, we did last year. We did it in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And we are hopefully doing it again in Nashville and hopefully in Tampa um, in November. So we're kind of planning on those right now. So we've done our own large-scale events. Um, we've also done some art dinners and our some anniversary parties. Um, we did a TEDx Women um, also several years ago. So that was for 200 ladies, which wow. was amazing and a huge thing to pull off. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. We did it. <laughs> we did it, yeah. Cute. I feel like as running events, it's like I feel like after you're like, oh, my gosh. That actually happened. And I'm sure the feedback that you get of is great. Like, you know, from like people that met someone or felt less alone, you know, coming to an event like that. Because something that is unique about your event is that you have table conversations mm-hmm. and like deeper thinking questions. So where did that start? Yeah. And why is that something that's like unique to um, the dining product? Um, I think that was always a built-in part of it because um, one of the reasons I started Dinner Party Project was because I always felt like when you go to like a birthday or a friend's thing and you're at a restaurant and it's loud and noisy and you're at this big long table and, you know, obviously you're, everyone's paying for their own meal and you're trying to figure out how to have conversation and, and it's usually like you're only talking to the people right next to you and – you can only talk to them for so long. Um, and it's not its not usually, not to say that it's not ever, but it's not usually the whole table having conversation together. And so that was the reason Dinner for Eight started was like, I want this to be about the collective conversation and not just about like, oh, an- another networking thing or another like, you know, you, uh, we have incredible food in Orlando. You can go out to dinner anywhere, which is wonderful. Yeah. And so this is – a little bit of a, just a different experience to invite people in to say there's a host. We're curating some of the questions. We're curating the conversation. We're making it so um, everybody gets to talk around the table. And that was the, that's the important thing for me is to, you know, let it have some breathing room, let the conversation go where it naturally goes, but then also some need to bring it back around to say like, okay, let's like bring it, you know, back around and like, you know, Rachel, we haven't heard from you. Like, you know, like I want to, like, I want to make sure that everyone is heard around the table. So that's definitely a very um, important part of any dinner party that we put on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the question that was for this event that I remember, it was like, where do you feel like you belong? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was talking about belonging and spaces and like, what would that look like for you if I'm correct me if I'm wrong of the topic um but I really like like that because it was like all of us around the table had felt sometimes like we had to change something about us to belong in a space or be like is that part of your story of why you're also passionate about bringing like women together like have you ever felt like you didn't belong or like that you didn't find your community? I mean, in one sense, like I, when I said I lived in LA, I felt like I was like, I don't know how to belong here. I don't know. I felt like just, I mean, I wanted to meet people and, you know, like I wanted to, there's only so much that I could, would put myself out there in, in that way. Um, 
And then I, yeah, I was kind of stuck in a place where I was like, I don't know where to find community. I don't know where to find belonging in that way. And, and, um, I feel like that's, if you're moving to a new city and maybe you don't meet people through work, I would also find that, you know, I would still find that challenging to like mm-hmm. totally start over and like, where do I belong? Like, what are my values? Who do I want to be? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you do have to put yourself out there, you know, in, in that regard and finding the places where you would maybe want to belong to that group, you know, whether it's like in sports or professionalism or, you know, friendships, finding, finding. So, I mean, I think that working towards that and fighting that, fighting the isolation, because that can be very easy. Naturally, right. like start being like, well, oh, I'll just stay home. Too much. <laughs> yes. Or if, yes. like feeling overwhelmed of like having, because it's a lot of energy too, like yeah. going to networking events, you know, I've been to plenty and they're amazing, but it's like that, like, okay, like kind of repeating the same thing. Like you have to like be your best self, you know, and like, you know, try to make those interactions and like you want to make genuine connections. So it's like for some people that's like absolutely not. Like that's <laughs> too much for me. And so I feel like the um, eating together and drinking together kind of lowers that a mm-hmm. little bit and it's like less anxiety about it because it's like we're all here for the yeah. same purpose of connection. So mm-hmm. like we can kind of put that at the door. And, and then someone's helping to really – do the heavy lifting of the conversation. And so you get to be present and you could also get to share, but then you also, it's not the onus is not on you fully Mm -hmm. to be like, oh, like I have to make, you know, a certain number of connections or I have to make this or that. It's just, you get to show up and be yourself. Yeah, And I know that probably people assume maybe that you're a complete extrovert in certain Uh things. Is that true or not? Great question. Um, So I think there's a difference between our personalities and the introvert and extrovert in that way. So um, how we show up in the world, of course, is how people perceive us, how we interact with people and how we, um, in a sense, talk and relate. So um, I think there's introverted and extroverted is – this took me a long time to really understand, and I think it can also change throughout your life, according to me. Um, but it's kind of like how you fill up your your bucket, how you fill up, how you restore, renew, how you play and rest, and like what are the things that you're feeling like, oh, man, like I walked away from that feeling like so much different or so much better or so much more like fulfilled or um so extroverted usually would be being around people in in the shorter um sense so um you know they they love their energy to go out you know towards people um which that fills them up like maybe you know more 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 with people is like oh that like gives them energy that renews them that like makes them feel um, excited. Yeah. And then an introvert is just like your, your, res- your restoration kind of comes by being alone. But, you know, like I think we all need solitude, yeah. stillness mm-hmm. and silence, you know, like whether you're introvert or extroverted. Um, but with an introvert, it's like they need that time to regroup and to just like settle, be by themselves. And so a lot of a lot of energy spent towards other people is like draining for them. Whereas an extrovert is like a lot of time spent around people is like renewing for them. It's like a fuel to keep going. Yes. Yeah. Um, And then I think there's also a dichotomy between like, you know, kind of outgoing and more shy and reserved. And so – um, I don't think that those necessarily have to coordinate with introvert and extrovert because I would say that I'm outgoing for the most part in the sense that, you know, I feel I can approach people very well and I, I really do um, like talking with people. I love uh, I love being at events and being around people and I, um, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm as reserved in that way, but that energy is, 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 I know that I feel that energy going out and then I know that I need to have time, you know, within my week and, um, all the things that I do to make sure that I have kind of just time totally by myself. I don't have to like take care of anybody or look after anything or just, um, and then some people, you know, they could be more reserved, but like being out around people like that does, they enjoy that. Maybe they're not like, 
you know, the loudest voice in the room or they're not talking all the time, but just like being around people is something that really does invigorate them and they like, or maybe just they do like, you know, the more quiet kind of um, lifestyle. Yeah. I love how you explain that so well, because I feel like people really do have the misconception or don't know. And like how you said, it's your kind of range of what you see, what you have seen through your life that it can change. Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely can relate to that, that I feel like I'm extroverted. No, yes, I'm outgoing but introverted because okay. I need to refuel by myself. Sure. And I like taking, like, days that I can just, like, unwind and, like, after a social event, I'm like, whew, got to go <laughs> home. <laughs> like, which I think before I definitely felt like I was very extroverted, like, a few years ago. Okay. You know, I was definitely very extroverted and I f- was feeling refueled by being around people. And so it's shifted a little bit. So I do believe that that has changed, you know? Um, And do you think that that, for maybe someone that's more um, introverted or extroverted, what are like maybe some tips that you have for like engaging in conversations when you're out, you know, for events? Because you go to multiple events, you've talked to a lot of people, like what are like the questions that give you like the ick (laughs) people (laughs) ask? Right. And then what are good questions that maybe for someone that's like, I don't know how to start a conversation. It's so hard for sure. me. Like what works for them? I don't know that it would be uh, across the board for everybody. Yeah. But I mean, in a sense, I think that being interested in other people, being like genuinely interested in them um, is always the best place to start. So kind of offering to ask about them. And um, <laughs> one thing for me is like I'm always trying to remember people's names. Yeah. And if I swear it feels like I they tell me their name and then it like goes out of my head. And then you're like, oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I either have to say their name again out loud or like sometimes, you know, I would just say, tell me your name again. Like I'm mm-hmm. yeah, I just, yeah. yeah. So, you know, everybody's favorite word is their own name. So it's just like reminding myself of that. Um, yeah, then asking people kind of, I, I mean, not that I'm – have never done this, but I mean, I don't want to start with what do you do for work because that's just such a cliche and it's not, um, the full scope of the person, but, you know, just like, you know, like what is, what's a perfect day for you? Or like, what do you like to do for fun? Or have you lived in Orlando for a long time? Or how did you get here? Um, what do you like to do around town? What's a favorite restaurant of yours? Making, you know, kind of picking up on maybe what their interest is and then kind of asking some questions around around their interests and like, oh, like, so how did you get into knitting quilts, <laughs> sewing, like, sewing quilts? Um, yeah, tell me more about – or like, um, you know, like what's your, you know – family like do they live nearby tell me tell me about them tell me about uh the last movie you saw or like what like some of the things that people are interested in trying to like pick up on that and some people might say like doesn't that sound like a little bit too like in your business but I feel like no I feel like those kind of questions actually makes you seem more genuine Mm -hmm. because you're genuinely trying and they actually like that person might actually remember you because you're like, I've never been asked that mm-hmm. at an event. I've been asked a million times what I do. Right. But someone to ask me like, oh, like what brought you around here? Or like what is something that brings you a lot of joy right now? Or mm-hmm. like what are you into? Like, you know, or you notice something about them and then you kind of point it out and they kind of open up. Because I definitely feel like we think that people don't want to build connection, but they're just waiting for someone to ask them a question. Everybody wants to build connection. Yes. Deep down inside, we all want to feel connected. Yeah. yeah. And we so. want to feel like, and I wouldn't say just important, it's just like seen, you know, that someone like, I went to an event or I went somewhere and like someone asked me something about me, you know, and right. someone like noticed something or someone followed up Absolutely. about something. So I love those tips because I get asked that too. And I'm like, I feel like there's so many ways to do it, you know, but I think it's genuinely trying to get to know someone else. Mm-hmm. and asking about the things that they care about. That is right. key, key. Um, and so for you, how has it been, how has what you do now played into like build, like kind of giving you purpose or feeling like a sense of, because um, I know your, your values are like rest and mm-hmm. feeling like refueled and and having things that bring you joy. So how has what you do tied into that? I mean, it's definitely been a ride over the past nine years. There's mm-hmm. definitely, there's seasons that are more fulfilling and more creative and 
<clears throat> excuse me, there's more seasons that are more challenging, you know, and especially as as you grow, there's going to be times when it just doesn't seem like everything <laughs> is aligning and you're trying to figure it out. Um but yeah, for me, when I am at a dinner party and people feel connected and they leave having a great time and and if people ever say that exceeded my expectation, then that is the most highest compliment for me that I feel very proud of. And I want people to come and feel like they're being taken care of for the night. And, you know, we do that through the way we sit at the table, the way we serve people and the questions that we ask. And, um... So those things about my business like really do keep me going mm -hmm. in that way. Um, seeing people have a really fun time and feel seen and heard, like you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have you met some of your closest friends through what I you do? Have. I have, yes, absolutely. Over nine years, I have yeah. have definitely people that I have met and kind of kept in my in my circle of friends and I'm always meeting new people so you kind of never know um who you're going to connect with and there's definitely a lot of people that I feel very grateful to have met through the dinner party project mm -hmm. because how you build those connections like what has that meant for you do you feel like friendships is like an underrated um thing that a lot of women sometimes desire or don't see like the value in or um how does that look like for you? I think friendships is incredibly important. Like, yeah, I I think that it has maybe gotten a little bit harder mm -hmm. in the past years and in the generations that are coming up. Like, there's so much more connection online. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing that is going to replace, like, being together in with somebody, looking them in the eyes, sharing the physical space, our pheromones in the same atmosphere. Um, so friendship and being um, in places that are intentional with intentional conversation, I, I would say I could not overrate that enough mm -hmm. for also your mental health because we really do and we really do need you know, people to connect with and to be real with and to be safe with. Mm -hmm. And so not to say that every single person that I know is somebody that I feel safe with or that I would tell intimate details about my life with, um, I think you do need to really cultivate and, um, you know, friendships take time and investment and, you know, maybe there's disagreements um, at points and there's things that are frustrating. Um, and I would just encourage people to not give up on friendships quickly. Mm -hmm. um, just like in relationships, you, uh, you know, if you're with somebody there's the hope that you can have healthy disagreement, mm -hmm. and we need to have that um, even if you're in a space that is, you know, like as you're in spaces that you feel safe with, there, there's so much um, beauty to – like I've had friends that we've had disagreements or we've had, you know, something mm -hmm. that was like pretty major, and then – when there are times that we've addressed things and looked at them honestly and then moved through them. Mm -hmm. And then like, I feel that the friendship is stronger because yeah. of that and how beautiful it is to like, we're not all the same. Yeah. So like, even with my close friends, there's things that like are going to annoy me or mm -hmm. like I'm going to annoy them yeah. in some way, or there's just going to be, we don't have the same beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, like with all my friendships, I don't have the same beliefs as everybody mm -hmm. that I know. And that's okay. We're all human. And, you know, I think there is something to understanding who you're going to fight for because you can't fight for everybody. Yeah. So, like, kind of I think the number is around, like, six to eight people. But, like, in your very close circles, it's like I feel very strongly about fighting for those relationships mm -hmm. and being honest and truthful and mm – -hmm. Um, resolving things. And then there's some friendships that, you know, either fall away or some friendships that you've fallen out with that are, that is like, okay, well, that's, that was for a time or that was for that. Or I can't address that. You know, like I'm not perfect. Like there's, fr there's, you know, friendships that I would have been like, I can't have this in my life right now. And so I just can't do it, you know? Um, so knowing your capacity for, um, 
giving in that way and then knowing how to fight well for those and keep them, keep those people really close in your life because we do need really desperately friendships to survive life. And like through your seasons of life that you go through. And I love how you said that some relationships, like they aren't as easy as like, okay, things need to be organically. Sometimes you do have the conflicts Mm -hmm. and you do have certain things, but it, it helps your friendship. I actually had my best friend on here before you. And so it was something that we talked about, about different seasons that we've walked through, Mm -hmm. but they've really, and even differences that we've had, you know, with personality types, like I'm very, we're like (laughs) polar opposites, but we also like bring out the best in each other and we Mm -hmm. see the things and the strengths within each other. Um, And it's like worth investing in those friendships because it's not always going, going to be like, you can have different people in your life that bring different things and offer different things um, to your life. Mm -hmm. So I love that you share that because that's very true, like to not give up on those. And some relationships do need to end Mm -hmm. and knowing when when the expiration date to certain friendships. Or some some are just for like you kind of like said, like a season, like I'm not friends. There's some people from 15 years ago that like if I saw them, great, you know, or maybe they've moved away and, you know, sometimes – you know, like life just happens, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're a part of it and it's not like an intentional, like Mm -hmm. you're not friends with them anymore. But I saw like, I, I remind that myself sometimes of like, there's seasons of life. And so sometimes they're, they're, this friendship is in this season of life and they, and then the season of life ends, you know, and sometimes there's sadness in that. And then sometimes there is just an accepting of, this is how life goes. What is maybe something that you're, you would tell your younger self of things maybe when it comes to community, rest, I know mm-hmm. things that are, are uh, valuable to you now. Um, what would you say if she saw you today right. doing what you're doing? What would she say? Yeah, I would say like rest is an crucial element of life and mm-hmm. finding those those practices and those habits is um for your mental health, for your physical body, um, for running a business. Um, I would say that I just have to give myself more grace than I think that I do because it's, um, it's definitely a lot. And, um, you know, I've learned a lot of really hard lessons over the years. And so some of that's going to be part of life. You're walking through some tough lessons and that's Mm -hmm. never going to end. And so I think that I still am telling myself that (laughs) it's a journey. journey. (laughs) Yeah. It's a journey and, um, kind of do what you can in, in those moments and in those seasons. And then, um, just to keep going. Mm Mm-hmm. I love that. No, thank you for sharing today, friendships, what you're doing. And so how can people connect and join a dinner party? Oh, yeah, for sure. So um, we are the Dinner Party Project, um, underscore on each end on Instagram. And we're on LinkedIn and Facebook and the dinnerpartyproject.co. Um my email is Dana Marie at hello TDPP. So people are welcome to reach out to me directly. I definitely want to go to an expert series this year. Yes. So that is a goal of mine. Um, and so what are you excited about right now with um, the dinner project? And like, what are you looking forward to like for this year for the yes. dining project? So we did, I didn't mention it early, but we did start something called the expert series. Yes. Yeah, so we're doing um, – 12 dinners. We started about a month ago, but we're starting um, 12 dinners over the next year around three different topics. So one is um, financial acumen for women with women and wealth. And then we've got leadership and entrepreneurship with John Reif and some other leaders. And then we've got um, style and creativity. So we've got those three coming up. Um, and then I would say the pod, my podcast, Dining with Dana, um, and, uh, the YouTube channel. So hopefully people will check those out. And I love that's, that is something for me that really fills up my cup Mm -hmm. is definitely is is sharing people's stories. Kind of like you said, I, I really love that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, Getting to know people and she makes amazing drinks. That's for sure. (laughs) So thank you so much, Dana, for being a part of this conversation. Definitely check her out and see all that she's doing. And I hope you were encouraged and got something out of today's conversation. Make sure to share with a friend and I will see you guys next week.